ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of World Talks here on TVP World, where every word matters. I'm your host, Benjamin Lee, and please join me and my guests on this next interview. Well, reports from Belarus paint a grim picture of escalating repression. Human rights group Yesna highlights mass detentions organized by the Lukashenko regime with arrests targeting political prisoners and their families. Activists warn of widespread fear and a humanitarian crisis under one of Europe's last dictatorships. Joining us today on TVP World to discuss these developments is Valeria Tsapkalo, uh, former Belarusian ambassador to the United States. Hello, sir, and welcome to TVP World. Yeah, thank you and good evening. So can you help us understand what do these mass detentions reveal about the current state of the Lukashenko regime? Well, you know, just for uh, Belarus people, uh, now it does matter. Everyone understands that it's just uh, the desire of uh, Lukashenko to keep the power in Belarus. As you probably know, uh, he announced the presidential elections that's supposed to take place uh, next uh, year on the uh, on january and uh, but and it will not be elections uh, in a normal way as we understand it as you understand it in the western world uh, because on the ballot list it will be only four candidates and uh, four candidates will be uh, having the same second name you know just with the name of lukashenko so uh, last elections he lost uh, to a dependent housewife and if the elections would take place, if in a ballot list it would be even his Spitz dog, uh, Lukashenko will lose. And uh, this is the reason he uh, wants now to secure uh, his win this time without any problems. And he threatens now the people of uh, Belarus. And uh, the way he acts now, as you see it, that uh, uh, many people are arrested and uh, many people are detained and the pressure is made on uh, relatives of political prisoners or people that appeared abroad. Uh, so this is just a new mechanism because uh, the last elections made a huge trauma on his uh, psychology and uh, he cannot pretend now that he has uh, any support now in Belarus society. Uh, why go through all these length when if he can just uh, pull something like a uh, Putin or the Kim Jong Un in North Korea where they just announce that they have 80 90 percent of the support and get it done with why go through all the trouble of actually having uh, having to intimidate these voters well you know just uh, uh, you you're right and uh, Lukashenko is afraid of because uh, again last elections demonstrated that uh, he uh, didn't have any support inside Belarus society. Uh, he wants somehow to get his popularity back, but it's not possible. Uh, the people, again, uh, will not be voting for someone or against someone, just choosing between two or uh, several candidates, several contenders. But the people in uh, Belarus case chose uh, pro and contra. In favor of Lukashenko, that was pretty a uh, small amount of people who did that last elections and uh, against him. So uh, this time, you know, just he wants to manipulate that even this way, like it happened in 2020, could not be repeated. Again, uh, as I would like to reiterate, because of the trauma that uh, he had uh, and uh, because the whole world now understands that his power is based only on brutal force and nothing else. Right, and I think you pointed out that, uh, well, with the arrest of family members, a political prisoner is another good showcase of trying to use this brutal force to crack down on any dissent. Uh, what does this strategy actually achieve for the government? We can only imagine it backfiring, no? Uh, the strategy, well, uh, first of all, it's just the story of one person. It has nothing to do with the government. Uh, and uh, if you just look at the so-called Latin American juntas, where a group of people, in fact, uh, uh, holds the power, like uh, it happens, for instance, in Venezuela, where, for instance, uh, 
uh, Maduro cannot control everything. They have uh, uh, generals, and uh, each of these generals has its own sphere of responsibility. Uh, you cannot come to Maduro and ask, you know, just I want to bring these computers uh, to Venezuela free of charge without paying any taxes. It's uh, just one general who is in charge of it. The same thing about, you know, getting a piece of land to build a hotel uh, where they have nice beaches on Venezuela. But uh, in case of uh, Belarus, it's only the story of one person, and the whole system will be reassembled, will be dismantled immediately after uh, Lukashenko will uh, feel not himself well. Uh, that's, uh, in fact, happened several times, or he will pass away. And uh, it may happen sooner than we can expect. All right. Now, you mentioned that a lot of speculation, we pretty much know that uh, Lukashenko is prepping up for this uh, election that's taking place late January, and it's only uh, mid-November. Do you think that there's still space for the situation to devolve into something even more sinister? Well, you know, just uh, the Belarus society, in fact, uh, uh, um, does not even notice this election. They are not paying, people are not paying attention to uh, these elections because uh, this time everything is predictable and none of the candidates uh, will be registered, even uh, uh, fake candidates, even uh, dependent housewives, you know, just uh, the unemployed people, uh, if uh, they are not controlled by the regime. If uh, in advance they are not invited to uh, Lukashenko's administrations, to administration, offered, in fact, to register as the presidential candidate and then publicly announce that uh, I'm good, but uh, uh, we do have a person who is much, much better than me, and uh, this is the reason I'm just living out of the race, uh, uh, giving the floor to the person who only deserves to uh, have the post of the president. This is the scenario. It's pretty simple. Uh, it's uh, pretty predictable. But this is the scenario that is uh, played out, and this is the reason uh, Belarus people this time, they uh, do not wait anything from these elections. And uh, we just uh, uh, wait until the black swan will, will arrive, and this black swan can be the uh, deterioration of uh, his health or his sudden death. All right. Now, it's really hard to imagine going from just cracking down on political dissidents to now even targeting their families. Do you see if there's even more pushback, more dissent on the Lukashenko regime that he'll even tune things up even harder? I don't uh, think that it could be something more harder because uh, uh, last elections, uh, Belarus people really believed that they could make any changes, uh, and uh, uh, they experienced they experienced not only deaths that uh, were not investigated. Uh, several dozens of people were killed uh, during uh, the unrest that took place uh, uh, four years ago, but uh, and many people were tortured and. Uh, the record number of uh, people, 45,000, went uh, through prisons. Uh, it, it was the record number in the post-war Europe. Uh, as uh, far as I remember, in Poland, uh, during the Solidarnost uh, time, there were about 10,000 people that went through prisons. And in our case, 45,000. And uh, take also into consideration that Belarus is four times uh, smaller than Poland in terms of uh, population. Uh, so, uh, the pressure is already high. Uh, the most active people, entrepreneurial uh, people, smart people, were pushed out of uh, the country. Uh, different estimations uh, show that uh, from 300,000 uh, up to half a million people are away from Belarus and are afraid of getting back uh, to its own country to their own country. And uh, this is the reason, uh, you know, just we, again, we cannot expect uh, anything. And the pressure is uh, made, uh, that is made on the families of uh, uh, political detainees uh, is just an attempt uh, uh, not to uh, allow them uh, even to raise a voice uh, during the 
uh, so-called elections. And uh, uh, this is just, um, you know, a precautionary measures because, again, uh, something uh, that can be, uh, that can happen inside, we do not believe in it. Uh, the only pressure that Lukashenko may have is the pressure from outside. And uh, uh, we uh, really have a lot of, put a lot of faith on the new administration in the United States of so Donald Trump came to power. And uh, even despite uh, his uh, motto, American, America first, and then so on and so forth, uh, we think that the politics of the United States will be different because we understand that the previous administration was the weakest probably in the history of America. And uh, any actions, I, I would like to underline this uh, statement, any actions that will be undertaken by the uh, administration, by the new Trump administration, can change the situation. At least we hope so. Now, you mentioned earlier that the 2020 election actually traumatized Lukashenko a little bit. It demonstrates and showcased uh, Lukashenko's uh, wide unpopularity and really dealt a blow to his reputation as well. Uh, even though in at the end, Lukashenko still retains power. It did, it did deal him a significant blow. Are there any lessons that can be drawn from 2020, be it a more successful part of it and those that well, resulted in the failure of kind of overthrowing Lukashenko's regime? Well, good question. You know, Lukashenko uh, grew up with uh, animals and uh, he uh, learned a lot from them. And you know, just animals sometimes when they feel the danger, they can be aggressive, but sometimes they can pretend that they are weak or probably even dead. Uh, Lukashenko behaves the same way. So uh, in the beginning, he was aggressive. And uh, when uh, hundreds of thousand people uh, came to the streets, uh, he announced that he would uh, step down and he even swear it uh, with his children. He said, I swear that I will step down. Uh, you know, just my children are, um, you know, just can be evidence and so on and so forth, you know, just, and uh, he reiterated it several times uh, uh, to uh, different interviews and to Belarusians that that was his last uh, term in the office and uh, you should just tolerate a little bit and so on and so forth. And uh, then he uh, pretended that he was uh, seriously ill. Well, he, he is seriously ill, but, you know, he demonstrated it publicly. Uh, he made a lot of promises about uh, the transit of power, and he used these uh, four years uh, by changing the Constitution. And he said that uh, it would be another president in Belarus, it will not be him, uh, that he would step down. And uh, for this reason, he created the so-called Belarus uh, National Council, and he will be the chair of Belarus National Council. Uh, so he made a lot of moves uh, that would uh, uh, make people think that uh, he would not uh, go for another re-election. But, uh, you know, just everyone understand that because he's criminal, because there are a lot of uh, uh, things that will come up when he will step down from the power, including corruption, including political murders, uh, assassinations, and, and so on and so forth. You know, just he uh, cannot uh, survive as a human being. Uh, if he would lose the power. Uh, so uh, this was the reason, you know, just why he behaved this way, trying to delude Belarus society. And many people, they believed in that. Uh, but, you know, just for another time, uh, we were fooled. Right. So hopefully, like you mentioned, the international community will be able to come together and exert some change. In the meantime, thank you so much for your input and insight. I really appreciate it. And thanks for being with us on TVP World. Thank you. And thank you for watching this edition of World Talks. For more news, update, and commentary, please stay tuned to DVP World.